If you can connect with your inner being without performing and without pushing or prodding or motivating yourself outside and just sit in this space where you're more connected to your inspired self, now we're talking. Now yeah. you're in alignment with everything that's that's really going to enhance your life. I'm Christian Camarina. And I'm Maureen Whitehouse. And this, and this is Miracle, is Miracle Renegade. Renegade. <laughs> so we, we're starting something new here. This is our beginning of our new season and we're using video and instead of just audio. We've kind of liked the feeling of just kind of having our own little space with being in this sound bubble before this. But this is kind of nice because there's more interaction and you get to see us and mm -hmm. and get the feel of who we are. And so pretty exciting that we're now using um, video. So if you have never joined us before this and you're new to the Miracle Renegade podcast, we are about revealing the miraculous in the marginal, the mundane, the mayhem and the everyday messes of life. So hold tight and enjoy this. It's a great experience because we don't believe that miracles are exclusive to anyone. We believe that that's something that's our birthright, that we should be experiencing miracles all day, every day. And if you're not, then you're not really on the path that you deserve to be on. Mm -hmm. So we came up with the idea that it would be really nice to lay a foundation to everything that we've been talking about in past podcast episodes. And if you haven't been listening, go back. I highly recommend that you get the feel. We give a lot about who we are and background to things. But right now, this is about setting a foundation that's more um, powerful and profound for everyone who's listening, everyone in the audience. And what we came up with and realized is that What's most fundamental to a miraculous life is the practice of meditation. So this whole season, we're going to label the overview as miracles and meditation. And today we're going to start off with just the basics, um, how to start meditation, how to start mindfulness meditation, just like the ultimate beginner's guide. So um, if you have never meditated before, or even if you have, I personally enjoy listening to all kinds of people's perspectives on meditation because there's so many traditions and there's so many approaches and each person has an individual take and, and a voice that has a different resonance when say you're listening to guided meditations. So I'm like, a can a meditation junkie actually, mm -hmm. I love it because I have in my own life experienced how profoundly impactful meditation is and how squarely in the center of a miraculous life it puts you. So to begin, yeah. before we begin on this whole overview, the beginner's guide to meditation, are there any questions that you have that you feel like you want to put us in that direction? And, and okay. also just to tell us a little bit about your meditation practice, if, if any, or if it's fallen off at times, just like, where are you in the practice of meditation? Uh, thank you, Maureen. Uh, to answer your question, <laughs> to answer your question, uh, well, first, a little bit about myself. I'm Christian Camarina. Um, I've been meditating for about two or three years. Uh, I, I come from like pretty much like tech, science sort of like a uh, mindset, like math and uh, physics, all that stuff. I, I love that stuff. But I found that as I was going older, all that information was just kind of flying around in my head. And it mm. didn't, I didn't feel like I had a lot of control. Um, just about the thoughts. Yeah, it, just it was kept just going. Like, it kept going. And whether I was sad or happy or like confused or like I, I couldn't control all these thoughts that were just ongoing and relentless. So, so is that when you thought about beginning a meditation practice or? How yeah, that yeah. it was, it was uh, through meeting you and like, <laughs> then all this, like sort of all these uh, different practices coming into my life that I started seeing the benefits 
of meditation. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I started, I started, it's, I just started like sitting down and closing my eyes and then just awesome. seeing like those, those like essentially like, uh, I don't know, it's like weird, like, uh, like just the flow of the mind, just like awesome. going in and out. And um, I just started doing that and then incorporating different methods of like meditation, if it was guided, if it was silent, it was. Um, so I, I promote meditation wholeheartedly <laughs> for, especially for people who think a lot. And I think there's like, in this day and age, everyone's thinking so much because the amount of data that comes in yeah. every single day and people and scrolling. getting faster and faster. It's, yeah. Yeah. That's that remind me later on to talk a little bit about why on multiple levels, meditation is so important because especially now the way that we're evolving as a culture, as a world, we have to have the capacity to be Mm self-referring. There's input constantly happening all day, every day. So let's talk about that at the end when we're talking about some of the benefits or even maybe in another podcast episode, we'll see how this evolves. But let's begin then with giving an overview because I love that you're, you've been practicing for a while. I'm really excited that that's something that you've adopted. And also, no matter where you are on your spiritual path, meditation will deepen you into the experience. Mm -hmm. It will help you be able to be in that place where whatever it is that's happening, say miraculously in your outside world, you're really getting in the flow of this and you're beginning to see things moving in a way that you'd say, whoa, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. That's miraculous. Sitting and being with yourself is the most powerful way to continue that kind of a trajectory and also to amplify those experiences in your life. Mm -hmm. So let's then get started with um, what kind of meditations that there are. And then when I'm speaking about these, Christian, tell me about your own experiences with those and then also what resonates with you most. And maybe I, I'm sure a lot of listeners or viewers can really resonate with you as someone who's been practicing this to get more centered and and in that space of real resonance with the spirited part of you. Okay. Okay. That's good. So I'll say one of the first meditations that people get exposed to is visualization. You know, you can go on YouTube and there are tons of videos to help you be able to visualize nearly anything, your best life, you know, something you want to bring into your experience of life, just visualizing, say, a ball of light that's kind of descending upon you to fill you with warmth and and illumination. And maybe if you are ill or feeling um, that you need to connect more deeply to something other than your physical body at the time when there's challenges going on, being able to visualize something that you're entering into a beautiful field or one of your most beautiful places, go-to places on earth that make you feel as though you're centered and connected. That's one of the meditations that people often get exposed to first. So have you had any experiences of of meditation where there's someone guiding you in a visualization? Your eyes are closed. You're still, you're relaxed. You're just breathing. There's nothing for you to do other than be moved along by the voice guiding you in the meditation. Yeah. I didn't realize I was doing this, but when I was younger, I used to listen to a ton of music. And songs would bring out these visualizations in me uh, that calmed me at the time. So I I would create through that. And I didn't understand that was actually like a form of meditation. And and it was a meditation. That's great because keep that in mind. I'm actually going to talk about music as a meditation in a little while too, because it is so profound for so many people. It pulls you into a different space. And, and that's really what meditation does for most people. Then, an, okay. then another one that's really typical for people that are beginning a meditation practice. This is in alignment with, in alignment with the Buddhist meditation. It's hmm. um, just centering on your breath, just letting yourself move into a place. Everybody has breath or else you wouldn't be on the planet. And so in in the meditations that I often guide that are breath focused, I'll say to start it out, if you close your eyes and let yourself just center on your breath now and begin to breathe more deeply and deliberately, 
and recognize that you came into this life with your first breath. That's when you were born and you'll leave this life with your last breath. So every breath you breathe as you breathe is connecting you to this part of you that's unbounded, that is not bound to just a physical body, but it breathes your body. So this is a great way to connect to spirit. So often with Buddhist meditation, how you practice that, is just getting yourself into a comfortable space. And we'll go into each of these more in depth, but just beginning to notice your breath, just going more inward rather than outwardly oriented and begin to breathe deeply and deliberately. And you can feel this often, you know, I help people who are in the midst of their greatest challenges in life. And sometimes people come and they're in the midst and have panic attacks. And there's one best way to help someone become more capable of recollecting and going inward. And that's just to focus on the breath. Mm. It's so universally calming Mm -hmm. and centering That any time, if you say, I'm not a meditator, I can't do this, just sit and breathe, just watch your breath. That means you can do it because you have breath and you can count and you can just feel the breath going in and out. And then if you want to combine those two, the visualization with the breathing, you can just see yourself breathing up the spine to the top of your head and down the spine to the base of your spine up the spine to the top of your head and down the spine to the base of your spine. So just feel that now as a centering little bonus in the midst of this talk. So we're not all just talking heads, but the next one would be where you're mindful. And with mindful meditation, this is a whole now branch of meditation that's sort of taken a life of its own started back with several people that um, most of them originated at Harvard, actually. Ellen Langer, who runs the Mindfulness Lab at um, Harvard, Hmm. she took a more practical approach that she says that, you know, being mindful in your waking life, being aware and present in your waking life is the only way to live a life that's peaceful and fulfilling. And if you're every problem we've ever had as a result of lack of mindfulness, that's what she says. And then there's John Kabat-Zinn, who's so amazing, who began the Insight Meditation Society and, um, and, and people of that whole world. And uh, he helps with stress reduction with um, this very meditation of focusing on your breath. And um, there's also um, Dean Ornish who went right into medicine and, and as a doctor, and then also incorporates this into his wellness plans of helping to heal heart disease. So this group, yeah. Sharon Salzberg, um, Jack Cornfield, nice. um, these people were all around in the, in the inception of this, where Tinat Han was the Buddhist monk that really kind of all of them uh, resonated with him and his teachings and began to expand this out in very practical ways that touch all areas of life for people, medicine and mental health and, and wellness on all kinds of levels. Mm-hmm. So you're becoming more and more bright <laughs> as we speak, Christian. Yeah, I <laughs> you pick, see that you have some time. light coming in. <laughs> it's yeah. very nice. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So it's the energy of all these sages that are joining Christian now to, to yeah. show him that he's in the flow. Okay. So then um, while you're in that space of mindfulness, and I like to stress the full, because like you said, our minds are so typically scattered and and focused on so much but if we're focused on the fullness of life or the fullness in each experience of life it starts to become like a feeling of gratitude that we embody in and you know embrace and walk around the world in so so mindfulness is really just paying attention while your eyes are open and you're engaged in the world And then if your eyes are closed and you're in this space with mindful meditation, it's really in, in my brand of mindfulness meditation, it's about focusing on the fullness of your life, Mm. emptying your mind to focus on the fullness of life. So we'll talk a lot. Okay. Mm, Yeah. 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 So what does S you, 
Oh, so what does that mean? Like uh, emptying your mind and, but focusing on the fullness. Yeah. I love that question. It means that we have it backwards. We think that life becomes full. The more things we get, the more things we accomplish, the more things we do, do, do out in the world. Actually, the sense of fullness that everybody's looking for comes from that connection to the part of us that's completely empty, Mm. empty of all motivation, empty of pushing and prodding and making you have to attain success out there, empty of all the mind chatter, empty of all the things that seem to be so important in life, but we don't take any of that with us. Mm. So the part of us that came in with our first breath and leaves with our last is focused in a different orientation and it is inherently full by the way so this part that we're looking for is already us it breathes us all day every day Mm. so when we start to become more empty of the outside focus the outside world and realize that that emptiness is actually a great and sacred space to be in and we drop down into that even more willingly we just let ourselves drop into it. Then we start to feel like gratitude upwelling within us and it has no outside prompt or reason. Okay. It just feels like, you know, I'm this next breath. I'm grateful for this next breath. And you really mean it. It's not just something that um, feels like, oh yeah, that's what you're supposed to do in meditation. It starts to be an, a personal experience then. It's like uh, when you feel happy for no reason. Exactly. How often, like, that's an important thing that anyone out there who's felt happy for no reason at any time, really, those are the exclamations on spirit in life, the exclamation points. Those are the times when you're really in sync with your divine being. Mm -hmm. Because sure, you'll accomplish and, and achieve and attain and arrive at all kinds of things in the outside world when you're connected in this miraculous way to the spirited part of you. And meditation is the way to most effectively connect like that. It's, it's really valuable in that regard above all else. But once you're connected, you realize that you can show up to anything and feel fulfilled. Hmm. It is the essence of fullness itself, what we're tapping when we meditate. So we have mindfulness. And then this is one that I particularly love as a complimentary meditation. Some people don't think of it as meditation, but it is journaling. Oh, okay. There's a way to journal that makes it more meditative. It's not about just, you know, talking about the things that are going on in your everyday life. It's, you know, highlighting yesterday, I picked up this at the store or, you know, I I did this and this happened at work. Uh, It's about stopping for a minute, taking those breaths. We always like to focus on the breath with meditation. So take a few breaths, go inside for a moment, have a blank page in front of you of any kind and allow yourself just to, at first, the way that this is a wonderful practice. And again, we're going to go into each of these meditations more throughout this season, but you're emptying your mind on the page. Oh, okay. So whatever you say, whatever you think, just boom, 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 boom. And you start to be able to watch it, but not after a while, be so obsessed about these thoughts or realize that you can have thoughts that you never act on. Yeah. And you can have thoughts about things that really don't mean anything, but so what? There's just mm-hmm. like kind of floating through clouds in the sky. And when you start to journal, the best thing about this is that you start to empty your mind actively And then you come to a point in time on the page, typically it's like maybe two pages in, where the real essence of you starts to emerge. And you might find, this is a wonderful as a daily practice, that a poet arrives, the poet of you arrives, or the the composer, Mm -hmm. or the person who is more artfully oriented in life, not reactionary, but more inspired in spirit. And that starts to emerge. And the best thing about this is you kind of like drain your brain of all the things. And then after a while, when you show up to the page, it just feels like, oh, here's my home. Here's where I show up to this blank, completely blank space that's empty. (laughs) And now I'm going to fill it with who I truly am. And you start to ask, 
And this is a great technique. And again, we'll get more into this in a, in a later episode. I always ask at the top of a page, is there anything you have to tell me or teach me? Now, who am I asking? It's a blank page and it's between mm -hmm. me and me. It's me asking the divinity of me, the miraculous being of me, the part of me that has infinite capacity to know it's in timelessness, past, present, future. It, it's the voice of my own best interest. Anything you have to tell me or teach me. So that's a great way to do the um, journaling kind of meditation. Then there's metta. Metta is a Buddhist form of meditation where you're thinking of the best interests of the world and of yourself. Have you ever mm -hmm. heard of metta or done metta meditation? I've done metta a couple of times, yeah. yeah. Was it guided from someone or how did you do that? I, I think it's what you said, like the best intentions. And I kind of let myself uh, think those things or like let those things uh, come out of me. Yeah. And it, 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 it feels like a, like a drop in a pond. Right. Like that. Very method. nice way to it, describe it. Yeah. It just kind of radiates out. Yeah. It moves out. So it's, you start with yourself and then you start with the people who are closest to you in your life. And then people maybe on the periphery of your life and then out into the entire world. And you might say something like, and again, we'll practice this again in another uh, episode. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you be at ease. May you know you are loved. May you know you are love. And then just feel what that feels like to sit in that kind of a space where you're allowing yourself to connect that deeply, but you're not in action out there or fixing the world or changing the world. Yeah. You're just knowing that your true self has such power and influence that just thinking in that kind of way connects you miraculously to a bigger picture in life. Wow. Yeah. 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 So think of anybody that you feel like you'd like to um, offer that kind of energy to. And that's one of the great meditations. And I will tell you, it frees your own heart exponentially whenever you do that, especially if you do it in a way that you're um, directing it towards someone that you might have a problem with mm -hmm. or have experienced pain with. Yeah. Start thinking these kind and, and generous and wonderful, loving thoughts towards someone else. And all of a sudden, there you are connected yourself. Yeah. Then there's another one that many, many people love, and it's along in the lines of the music that you were talking about, uh, where it's mantra oh, meditation. Okay. Yes. And, and that's really beautiful and wonderful. And it's existed in all traditions. Are you familiar with mantra meditation? I am. I, uh, this Buddhist group came up to me and they said, uh, would you like to come over and chant? And I was like, okay, sure. I never even heard of chanting before. Yeah. And uh, I, I practice the words. It's like a couple of phrases and you just say them over and over again. And you kind of get lulled into like this. Uh, I, I don't even know how to explain Empty it. Empty mind state yeah. where the mantra is filling your experience. You know, I often do uh, workshops at the Shivananda ashram. And, and since that's a Hindu based tradition, the kirtans and, and doing a lot yeah. of chanting and mantra is part of it, a daily part of their practice. And often when I'm there, I'll be hearing the mantras in my mind throughout the day that mm -hmm. the chants and the repetition of these names of the divine, typically most mantras are the names of the divine. And there are mm -hmm. thousands of names of the divine. You know, you could just say love and peace and joy are also names of the divine or aspects of the divine. And at the, even when I leave the Shivananda ashram after being there for a few days or a week, what happens is that I, um, I find myself hearing the mantras at the airport <laughs> when I'm on my way home and at, for the, for weeks after I'm hearing that fill my mind, not the incessant mind chatter that's typically accompanying human life. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah. Really beautiful. So <laughs> if you play those chants in the background, when you're doing like chores or folding clothes or doing yeah. things like that, that's a form of meditation. You're actively engaged in life, but you're doing that. So, so in, in most traditions that in Christianity and Hindu and Buddhist in, in many traditions, there are prayer beads mm -hmm. and 
the reason why we have prayer beads is because people will do the repetition. So it might be a, in, in the Christian tradition, Hail Mary on a rosary. It might be in the Hindu tradition. Any number of those chants could be just, you know, Ram, 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 which is the name for God. And just having that occupy your mind is an easier way to get out of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, that actually does work for me. Awesome. Yeah. I, I love like, that. So I, I didn't understand like when I was 16 and stuff, I would listen to songs over and over again, but it's because uh, I connected with the songs. So I didn't have to think about anything. So mm. I, it was like a sort of like emptying my mind. Yeah. See, so this. that's yeah. it. And it really is, you know, even if as a child, I remember we had sidewalks when I walked home from school and after a day of school, you know, it was like, ah, I'm by myself. I can, I was a kind of a shy kid. So I didn't really like that pressure of being in a classroom and things. So when I was walking home, I was like flying home. I was so happy to kind of like be in my own space. And I remember I used to count the cracks in the sidewalk. Yeah. I would uh -huh. walk counting the cracks in the sidewalk and it just felt so nice because my mind was occupied but I just felt like blissful all mm -hmm. the time walking home so it's that that's kind of combining what we're talking about the repetition of a chant and then back to counting on on your hands one mm -hmm. two three four five we'll talk about that the mudras and in meditation as well but mm. even just counting your breaths again that just whole, occupying your mind so that it's not all consumed with the mayhem and the messes of life mm -hmm. so another one that i particularly love that i really would like to um, have us play around with on the on one of the episodes is a candle meditation mm. I love it so much because for people who have a really hard time focusing, it's because often when people close their eyes, they get in there and they just start to see and feel and hear the mind chatter. Yeah. And often that's an intimidating thing for some people who, who have a mind that's really, really even beating them up sometimes. Yeah. And we're talking about, you know, beginner meditation at this point too, where some people were just jumping on. But again, this is a great method. If you've been practicing some of the other methods, the candle meditation is so beautiful because it's, it's where you're keeping your eyes open, but they're focused on the light. Mm. And at our core, if we go to that place deep within us and we find ourselves in that emptiness, that emptiness is actually not darkness. It's full of light. So here you're focusing on something in the outside world. And I, again, I love, we'll practice this one and you'll see, I think it might become one of your favorites too. Knowing you, I think it might become one of your favorites. And this is great for people who have ADHD mm -hmm. or uh, any of those things that, you know, I don't believe in those labels, by the way, I believe that, um, many people are focusing on things that they don't enjoy and don't love. And that's why it feels challenging and stressful yeah. that once we start to go inward and are more self-referring, we begin naturally to focus on things that are more fulfilling for us and that we really actually want to focus on so that we don't feel scattered. Yeah. You know, if it's attention deficit disorder, maybe it's because you don't really want to pay attention to the things that you are <laughs> or oh, have yeah. been, you yeah, know, that's a good point. Yeah. So focusing on that candle starts to get you one pointed focus, but in a way that's soft and subtle because candlelight is very soft and subtle. It's, it's akin to that feeling of that fullness and that emptiness, that white light kind of in a soft cloud feeling when you're in a deep meditation. And so just focusing on that candle really brings you into an alignment or maybe even a oneness with the light that you are. Mm -hmm inside, outside, all the same. That can naturally progress, by the way, maybe not in the very beginning, but it's a nice way to start a, another form of meditation where you get up early, early in the morning mm -hmm. and you meditate on the sunrise. It's beautiful because you can look directly wow. at the sun at sunrise. Mm -hmm. And there's this quality, like think about it. If you're just thinking about it now in your mind, yeah. there's this quality of the sun rising that when you meditate on that or become one with that, 
what a profound release to this essence of you that's really profound and powerful. But early in the morning, it's still subtle. It's still rising, like we are rising into our own truest identity. And it starts to become really something that can be profound and powerful. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't realize that until I started camping last year. Like, uh, and I would get up with the sun because the sun awesome. hits you, and it's awesome. uh, it, it is like uh, it like lulls you into the day. Like yeah. it, the the stress is just gone. Yeah. <laughs> So beautiful. So this candle meditation leading to sunrise meditation is called Tratak meditation or Trataki meditation. Trataki and meditation. Okay. Tratak or Trataki. Okay. So in, in the Hindu tradition. And so that's beautiful just to know that it helps you be able to get that one pointed focus without your mind kind of um, revolting too much. Mm -hmm. Because think about it as you're watching your mind the thing that gets upsetting to people or makes them feel anxious or upset or depressed or, or um, panicky is because there's so much of a, you know, it's a, a parade and yes. there's so much going on that you feel like this impulse, you're supposed to act on it. Yeah. But when you deliberately sit still and you're in a meditative state, you know, you're not going to act on it. So it begins to be, feel really natural and really wonderful to let those thoughts parade but you're just still and inactive, really beautiful. And it gives you, when you start to sit still and still have an active mind, it starts to feel okay. I can't do anything about that right now. I'm sitting here with my eyes closed or my eyes open, looking at a beautiful scene or focused in, in like kind of a blurry way around you without, if, it's afraid, if you're afraid to close your eyes, just let your eyes gently rest somewhere without much focus and breathe and exhale, inhale, exhale, mm -hmm. and watch how your mind begins to slow down. One more thing to mention about that breath kind of that naturally comes into a rhythm when we begin to meditate is that as you slow down your breath, you slow down your mind. Mm -hmm. This is really important for beginners with meditation. If you want to know some of the benefits, slow down your breath, you slow down your mind. And then it becomes more easy and natural to have a still mind. So then there's one of my favorite ones. It's, it's dance or movement meditation. You oh, know, okay. most anyone who's a dancer can feel that there's a place or a point in time, just like musicians, where you get into this flow and then the essence is moving you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used to have a really good friend who was a Sufi uh, dancer she passed but really beautiful her name was rupa and she was a, a whirling dervish and so wow. i was exposed via her resonance with that i was exposed to a lot of sufi dancing whirling dervish which is ecstatic dance which is a form of meditation and it's so beautiful if anybody has uh the inkling to go and just check out some videos where their hands are raised to the heavens and they're whirling and feel it. We, I used to do that when I was a little kid, just like in the living room, spin, spin, spin until I got dizzy and fell down just because yeah. it was fun. And, but this is a way of kind of getting out of your mind and being in a whirling movement of, of oneness ultimately for the people who really are practiced at that experience. But even just watching it is a beautiful meditation. So those are just some, I'm sure I might have forgotten a couple and we'll touch them when I remember <laughs> and, and, and get some really tangible tastes of this during yeah. this next season. I'm, I'm excited for this yeah, me because too. it's so foundational to a miraculous life. If you can connect with your inner being without performing and without pushing or prodding or motivating yourself outside and just sit in this space where you're more connected to your inspired self. Now we're talking. Now yeah. you're in alignment with everything that's, that's really going to enhance your life. So yeah. just briefly before we end the episode, just some benefits of meditation. Let me ask you, what kind of benefits did you feel um, when you began a meditation practice? Well, uh, 
the benefits I felt were mostly like calming the mind. Uh, I thought, I thought I took my thoughts way too serious because I thought, well, they're my thoughts. So and like, that's all I have. I have. <laughs> that's all I have. So if I'm thinking about it, I have to do it. Right. And that led to disaster because it's like, because <laughs> <laughs> as you can imagine, you can't yeah. do everything at once. Right. And uh, it and it feels scattered. It feels like a scatter shot. And I was always grasping. So I was tired. I was mm-hmm. like depressed. I was uh, I wasn't accomplishing anything. Uh, so med- meditation just kind of like settled me. And uh, I would just kind of walk pretty much like one step at a time. And these like thoughts would kind of come like calmly and Mm. I, I could handle it and then go to the next one and the next one. I love so. that because you're talking about how practical it is also in everyday life, how applicable it is for mm. everyone, not just for people who want to have a more uh, aware or enlightened experience of life. Mm-hmm. It helps you by nature to be more aware because that is our true nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, just to be like uh, perfectly honest, I am ultra aware like uh i've always been aware as a person and it's aware to the point where like i'm very sensitive like uh, and that can promote a lot of anxiety for a lot of people listening if you're really the perfect candidate for this kind of thing and the perfect candidate for miraculous life is Mm -hmm. somebody who is sensitive but in the beginning like you said if you're not focusing that capacity to be sensitive and aware on things you actually want to focus on yes and you know you have a choice you know you can choose thoughts that you actually want to think mm-hmm. and you can let those other ones just float by like clouds in the sky takes a little bit of practice but mm-hmm. meditation is so helpful with that yeah. so that helping calm the anxiety of that mind that's so full, it is centering and calming. It helps you focus in everyday life. Even if you're in the midst of a life where you um, have maybe an entrepreneur who runs a company, Mm -hmm. if you want to be able to focus deliberately on the things that are the most important, that's a natural byproduct of a meditation practice that's consistent because you're now choosing very awarely as you sit still, which thoughts are worth thinking. Yeah. yeah, And what you want to actually choose to live. Yeah. And it, uh, and it just, it dominoes from there uh, because I'm focusing on the things that I like to do and want to do. uh, My life is just better. It just feels better to wake up every day and not think about like the world ending because I'm not, I'm not like going feels good to, not to think about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now I can yeah. like, uh, I can enjoy science articles instead of thinking about like where the implications about what's going on or like the <laughs> evilness the next, of people. The world will implode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, focusing where you want to focus that sense of calmness and peace and ease, especially mindfulness practice as a meditation begins to center you where you are. So you can Mm -hmm. actually live the life you're living and not be always focused on the future or on the past. That was, you know, a problem or dissatisfying and then keep reliving that. So it's truly a form of release on every level. Yes. Yes, exactly. And, And during this whole season, as we progress, now I'm getting pretty really excited about this because there's more, you know, there are meditations. I've actually practiced meditation techniques with people who are adepts and people who, um, you know, masters in the Himalayas. I've traveled to other countries, China and Tibet and, and India to, uh, because like I said, I'm a meditation junkie. Once I, once I understood how powerful meditation is in and of itself without even having a spiritual path, just what, it does to not be so all consumed with the human condition and be able to step back and experience yourself as that something more that vastness even if it's in appears to be confined to a physical body yeah this is this is just kind of a little puppet playground uh little bit of a um shell and Mm -hmm. and costume that we wear once you start identifying with something more 
if you don't identify with a deeper resonance with something more, that's awful scary to have your human form be the only thing that you rely yeah. on. Very precarious yeah. way to live life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to be very careful. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. I think that touches about all the beginners kind of a path into meditation, letting us get into that space. But that reminds me, let's just end with these kind of profound thoughts that what meditation actually does for us at the best level is it helps us to cultivate a beginner's mind hmm. where, and, and by a beginner's mind in most spiritual traditions, that means you're not coming with all the burdens of the past. You're not thinking about what's next. You're right at the beginning of your own life right now in this moment, every day and in every moment. And it's just such a beautiful thought when you think you can let go of the past, the past is over. It can touch me not as a course in miracles would say. And, and this practice of meditation is a great way to have a clean, beautiful, pristine slate that then you can write the and compose and create your own life. And Beautiful. I'm excited. I'm excited for this season. I, I'm excited for this season. Yeah. I just want to end us with one little quote from A Course in Miracles and maybe just like close your eyes to absorb this mm -hmm. in. Because again, this is a miraculous path we're embarking on with this as our wonderful and amazing complement to this meditation and miracles. I will be still an instant and go home. I will be still an instant and go home. I will be still an instant and go home. And now we're ready to live our supremely fulfilling lives. So enjoy. See you later. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> Thanks, Maureen. I'll see Bye, you later. everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> hey, guys, if you like the show and you want to comment about your own meditation practice, uh, leave a comment below.